still under the same system of government that I want them to send us back to the time when the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. EMA has been scrapped and higher education fees have been put up. We may blame the condemned government for putting the fees up to nine grand, but don't forget it was the Labour Party who introduced them in the first place. I'm Lizzie Gray, I'm 17, and my great granddad was on the original Drama March. They've put up tuition fees, scrapped so many public sector jobs, and scrapped the MA, which is essentially, along with the higher tuition fees, has cut off education to an entire generation of young people. Personally, I've been unemployed since I left college uh, you know, a year and a half ago, uh, where I've had one temporary job in between, uh, in between those times, uh, and there's absolutely nothing out there for me. I live in Hull, which has got the highest youth unemployment of anywhere in the, in the country. We don't want much. We want decent jobs. We want decent houses. We want healthcare if we're sick. We want the right to be able to retire in dignity, at a reasonable age and a decent pension. And what we've said all along is if capitalism can't afford this, it's been repeated up and down the country by the marchers and the people who have come out to support us, then we can't afford capitalism. <laughs> of young people marching the length of the UK demanding work. What better time then to participate in events like this weekend and to arm ourselves with the knowledge and the confidence to answer back when politicians and the media argue that there's no alternative to capitalism. As we know, there is an alternative and that alternative is socialism. I'm here today... to bring our greetings and solidarity to Socialism 2011. Do you remember last year at Socialism? Just a few days before, 52,000 students marched through the streets of London. Of March the 26th, the demonstration of half a million to three quarters of a million through the streets of London. Of June the 30th, 750,000 teachers, lecturers and civil servants on strike. And now, 24 days time, that's all, 24 days, it feels like we've been waiting 24 years, but 24 days time, up to 3 million workers on strike in this country, the BBC says actually, it may not be 1926, but the biggest strike since the winter of discontent, well there's a warning for Cameron and Clegg and Osborne, they say that that strike brought down the government. <laughs> it could bring down your government as well. PCS have had the strongest supported strike of any that we've had in recent years. My point and the message I think that has to come from this rally is that it's the ideas of working class solidarity, it's the ideas of socialism that are no longer can be dismissed as people tend to do in recent years as some utopian dream, but in fact are the most powerful antidote to the new neoliberal consensus from Wall Street to Beijing, taking in Downing Street, Brussels, the studios of News International and the financial markets, all of whom convey the message that they expect our class, the working class, to pay the price for a crisis of their making. This is about a fight for our pension. It is the fact they want us to um, pay an extra 3% or more. They want to make us work extra till we're 68. There's no consultation, no negotiation whatsoever. The government have practically refused to negotiate. And uh, really, this is a fight with our government. And I've got to say, the only alternative at the moment is the trade union movement. There just is no other voice in this country who's prepared to speak up for the workers. There just isn't. We are clear that November the 30th is the start of a massive campaign. We will follow November the 30th with an overtime ban till the 31st December. 
And we have already put out the call for an immediate post-November 30th meeting of unions to decide the next step, which must involve some form of escalation. Industrial action represents the most organised, disciplined and focused form of class action and could fundamentally change the established order because it demonstrates that working people are prepared to fight in order to defend or improve the conditions they live under. It also reveals the abilities and talents of working people and exposes the great myth that working people cannot organise their own workplaces and by extension their own society in their own interests. President of the National Union of Royal Maritime and Transport Workers, down here this morning outside Temple Tube Station on the embankment uh, to join the Youth Fight for Jobs Jarro Marchers on the final one mile leg of their uh, long journey into Trafalgar Square. My union's been very proud to be associated and the sponsor of the marchers. Uh, they stand uh, in a great tradition of fighting for something better, for a better world. Uh, and they're showing a lead to young people uh, from one end of this country to the other. Congratulations, uh, first of all, to Socialist Party members for uh, the work that you, I know you've been engaged in uh, all year. Congratulations to you, Fight for Jobs, and congratulations to the Jarrow Marchers with whom we were so pleased to be associated yesterday on the last leg of their historic uh, recreation of that march 75 years ago to London. It's time for socialist solutions to this capitalist crisis. Repudiate the only step to the banks, oppose the EU austerity policies. We've got a job to do, and that job over the next few months is going to become increasingly desperate and increasingly important. Comrades, I look forward to working with you over the next 12 months as we work together over the last 12. Solidarity. When I was growing up in Sunderland, my dad always said you had to join the Labour Party because they're the only they're the only party in this country who speak up for the workers. Sorry, Dad, no longer. Because that's exactly what we're doing. Well, I'm so don't know why did I join the Socialist Party? One, Sadiq Khan. Congratulating the Justice Minister on selling Birmingham and my colleagues to the private sector like slaves. This is the only party which I want to belong to. Why? Full employment, a decent living wage, a decent house to live in, a society that looks after everyone, not just the privileged few. To be able to withdraw my labour without fear of imprisonment or losing my job, free health care, an end to privatisation and the renationalisation of every industry in this country. Comrades, the 30th of November, well I can't tell you what the people are going to do. <laughs> <laughs> strike action. We don't call it. We call it our basic human right, which was to withdraw our labour. на то, что Казахстан находится в совершенно другой части мира, несмотря на то, что политические условия чрезвычайно иные и в отношении казахстанских рабочих активистов, социальных активистов, активистов нашей организации используются все методы давления репрессий, рабочие движения в нашей стране также следуют примеру европейского рабочего движения, пытаются самоорганизоваться в свои боевые профсоюзы и выдвинуть в том числе политические требования. 
На сегодняшний момент уже шестой месяц продолжается борьба мангоставских нефтяников. talked about how Wisconsin was a, a big push for this Occupy movement, but at Wisconsin I saw people carrying signs that said, fight like an Egyptian. So we know where that inspiration really came from. <laughs> we want to talk about some of the tinder that was rock, uh, lying on the ground that might have caused the rapid spread of this fire, um, of this occupation. We would obviously have to address the rampant poverty across the world, um, the increasing first world unemployment, the housing bubble imposed on us by uh, casino capitalism, the debt bubble, which is consuming the GDP of our, even our most uh, prestigious industrial nations. And this is really just unrestrained global capitalism working itself to its logical ends. The Arab Spring, the indignados, the Greek, uh, people occupying the British riots we watched internationally and we held our breath because we understood the anger, we understood the pain that led to those events and the explosive setting that caused them to turn to such violent action. And they have said that they will let us stay um, if, if we downsize the uh, occupation and then um, leave by New Year. So last night we met the General Assembly um, and basically, if we were ready for the question, deal or no deal, and we said, no deal. <laughs> Personally, I would propose the democratisation of the City of London Corporation under workers' control and management. So <laughs> it is out of the present economic crisis that a new leadership is being built. And the last point I'll make is, before I got elected to the Dáil, I worked for Aer Lingus, which is the, the national airline in Ireland. And I was coming over on the plane today, and I met some of my former colleagues who were working on the flight. And they were updating me about what was going on in the company, and like everywhere else, the race to the bottom, and the drive down of conditions. And the chief steward made the point to me, and he said, you know, they think they can push us around because they've done it before and we've rolled over. But there comes a point when you don't roll over anymore and you make a stand. That day is coming. The message from this rally, from our party in Ireland and our international, is that we are engaged in that day. It's fast approaching. The struggle for a better world is on, and we are privileged to be a part of it.
Norman Fowler, the Tory MP for Sutton Coalfield, came into the House of Commons to cut the benefits paid to the families of striking miners. Eric Heffer, then a Labour MP from Liverpool, Terry Fields, myself, and I think 26 other Labour MPs, invaded the pitch in the middle of the House of Commons. I walked over to uh, Norman Fowler, I picked up his speech, I ripped it into tiny uh, shreds, and I threw it down. Parliament was suspended, grave disorder having arisen. <laughs> now, when have you heard that phrase in the last 18 months? With everything that's been done by the Tories and the Liberal Democrats against working people in this country, when have you heard that sort of anger expressed in the House of Commons that ordinary working people are feeling? To follow the marvellous example of the Popper councillors and the Liberal Sea councillors that refused to implement cuts and those jailed not for paying their poll tax. It was our party, the Socialist Party, that played a magnificent role in organising the drops in the Pool and off the poll tax. It's our party that continues to provide a programme to complete the tactics, strategy that frees confidence into rank and file workers to reach the conclusion that gain for our class can only be gained through struggle and that a sellout is akin to betrayal of our class. So, the strike of the 30th, in our opinion, should go ahead. If the government capitulates, organise a mass demonstration, if not on the 30th, on the Saturday after that. Because the cuts are still on at local level. They're down to the bone in the civil service and in local government. And this is the fight of our lives. And if the government does not capitulate, we must follow that up, either with a more effective strike, or for a 48-hour strike, until this government capitulates. And the general marches have given us a very good example of determination and preparedness to struggle. This was a political triumph. And we say to the leaders of this movement, if you don't have this attitude, you don't deserve to lead. If you are not prepared to struggle, step aside and make way for people like Janice Goodrich and other left leaders to lead this movement in this battle. Comrades, I think we have to also build the Socialist Party. You've marched in the footsteps of history. This intrepid band of, of uh, brothers and sisters in this marvellous demonstration. But we don't want to repeat this march in 80 years' time. We don't want to repeat it in 10 years' time. You've made this sacrifice. You've given us an example. But now we must build a movement that in this decade, in this century, makes it a century for socialism. That's what the 21st century should be. And we started on this battle. Let us build a powerful movement. Let us build the Socialist Party. Let us lay the basis for a new mass party in the working class. But above all, raise the banner, the programme and the explanation of socialism to arm the working class for this titanic struggle that is opening up in Britain and internationally. Thank you.